everyone and welcome to my channel. I hope that you are all good. In today's video, I have something very exciting to share with you as I get to share with you the brand new stamping plates that have launched from Miss Lucy. So these officially go on sale on Friday at 7 p.m. She has a whole collection, but I was super lucky to be able to purchase two of these plates early. So these were the two that I went for. So this one is called Celestial and it's got a bunch of moons and stars and some little florals on there. And then I went for the winter foliage because even though it's called winter, I felt as though I would get a lot of use out of some of this greenery and leaves throughout the summer. So that was why I went for these two. But she has a whole bunch of plates going on sale on Friday at 7 p.m. I will leave a link to her website in the description box below. If you've watched my channel before, you'll see that I use her water decals and they are absolutely amazing. And it has been really really wonderful to go alongside her on her journey of releasing her own stamping plates. I'm so proud of her and it has been so refreshing watching her on her journey to releasing these, seeing how passionate she is about her brand. Another thing that she's very passionate about is that her products are made here in Britain. So you can see that that is stamped there on the bottom of her stamping plates and it's again it's something that's really really refreshing especially in the current climate so I wanted to have a quick play around with one of the plates and show you guys it's a really simple design but I wanted to show you guys that every single image that I tried stamped absolutely perfectly which is amazing sometimes you'll get a plate and you'll find that a couple of images are really tricky or sometimes the more finer detailed ones are tricky but I had absolutely no no problems with any of the images on these plates so we will jump back to talking about the plates in a moment but let's go on to the design for a little bit so the bases on three of the nails I wanted to do a gel polish ombre so as you can see I've got two colors from Kiki London so I'm going to be applying dream catcher down at the cuticle area and I'm going to take that roughly three quarters of the way down the nail and then I'm going to come in with a lilac lover at the tip of the nail. So I'm then going to just take my Kiki London ombre brush and blend these two colours together. Now I always start off by blending out the harsh line where the two colours meet, kind of just swiping backwards and forwards, mixing them together, creating the third colour which is the transitional colour between the lighter and the darker shade. Then once I've created that transitional colour I take that up into the dream catcher and blend that out and then I'm going to do exactly the same and take it down into the lilac lover. Then I find that I just go backwards and forwards until I'm happy with the blend. I'm not amazing at gel polish ombre. I actually find acrylic ombre a lot easier than gel polish ombre, but it's something that I've been trying to practice a little bit more and I have seen a little bit of progress in it. Now with your first coat of gel polish ombre, it's never going to look perfect, I find. I find that I can get a more perfect blend once it comes to applying that second coat. So I don't stress too much about the first coat. Moving on to the second coat, I'm going to apply my gel polish exactly the same as before. So I'm going from the cuticle roughly three quarters of the way down the nail and then I'm coming in with the lilac lover. Now I usually take the lighter colour further down the nail. So depending on where in the ombre the lighter colour is, that's the one that I'll apply a little bit more of. Or sometimes it can depend on what colour I'm working with. Sometimes I'll work a little bit different with neons and things like that. So I would just say have a play around. I personally find that the Kiki London Gel Polishes ombre quite nicely together because a lot of their colours have this creamy consistency. So they blend together nicely. Another thing that I wanted to mention is whenever you see my brush going out of shot, that's usually when I'm cleaning it off. And I clean it off on one of the Kiki London alcohol pads. I find by regularly cleaning off the brush you get a neater blend because you're not taking too much of one of the colors into the other color if that makes sense 
Now, if you are like me and work a little bit heavy handed with your ombre brush, you may find that you're left with brush strokes in your ombre. So what I like to do is once I've finished creating the ombre and I'm happy with the blend, I leave it to sit for a minute or two before popping it into Cure. And I find this just helps the colors blend together a little bit more and those brush strokes level out. So here you can just see, I'm leaving that to sit there while I clean off my brush and then I'll pop it into Cure for 30 seconds. Now over the top of my ombre I'm going to come in with the no wipe matte top coat. Before I do any stamping I usually like to apply a top coat just because then if I make any mistakes with my stamping or if I don't like the design I can wipe it off with some alcohol or some acetone without disturbing or breaking down my gel polish underneath and then usually if I do this I opt to use a matte top coat because I find it's a lot easier to either hand paint or stamp over a matte surface and how gorgeous does this ombre look matte I really loved this with the matte effect so I did off camera I did the other two nails so we have three ombre bases to work on and once we finish the stamping on these nails we are going to do a different design on the other two nails so here I have that beautiful celestial plate and I'm also going to be using my Clear Jelly Big Bling Stamper and two stamping polishes that are from Clear Jelly as well. So the white one is their sticky stamping polish but I'm just going to be using it as a regular white stamping polish because I couldn't find my normal white stamping polish. First of all, I am just going to give my stamper a little clean using a lint free pad. I will, sorry, a lint roller. I will use this throughout the video to clean off my stamping head, <laughs> my stamping head, because I find it the quickest and easiest way. So let's jump on to the first image. I applied a little bit too much stamping polish, so you could see it did smear a little bit, but it didn't massively affect the image, so I went ahead and just continue to apply it as normal usually I find I only get this smearing on my plates if I apply too much polish and that was exactly what I did here but as you can see it's picked up that image beautifully I've picked it up and stamped the exact same method that I've used on all of the other stamping plates that I have in my collection and I was really impressed with how pretty this looked this is quite a fine detailed intricate design and it's stamped on absolutely beautifully so once I have finished any kind of stamping I give my plate a good clean with some acetone and a usually I would use a lint free pad but I didn't have any of them to hand so I'm just using some kitchen towel here but I'm making sure to give that plate a good clean otherwise that stamping polish is going to dry on and then it's a lot harder to remove and you will also find you don't get a good pickup of your images if you have any dried on stamping plates um, stamping polish on your plates now how beautiful did these gold stars pick up well I say gold but it's a little bit more of a rose gold bronzy color I will leave this color stamping polish linked in the description box below for you guys as well but for a large image like a it's quite a full-on opaque image it's stamped absolutely beautifully this nail in the set ended up being my favorite because I liked how simple it looked with just the moon and I'm going to do two stars Throughout the design, I use quite a lot of the images from this stamping plate, which is not something I would usually do in a stamping image, a stamping design, but I just wanted to try out as many of the images as I could whilst trying to create a design that flowed. So here we're going to pick up a little star and I'm just going to stamp that down on the tip of the nail there. I always give my stamper a little rock or a little roll from side to side before picking it up and I find this helps get me a really good transfer of the image just look how pretty this looks so whenever i've finished one nail i give everything a good clean so i clean off my stamper plate anyway between images but i give it a really good clean and then i'll also clean off my scraper and give my stamper head a really good clean on the lint free sorry the lint roller this is just because otherwise you end up with quite a bit of build up you'll end up with a lot of polish building up on your scraper and that can affect scraping and that's another thing that can play around and cause you havoc when you are picking up your images. So again here we're going to try another one of the more detailed images and I'm going to take the bronzy gold coloured stamping polish for this one. So one quick swipe as you can see it swipes off all that excess polish and then once you apply or press down your roller it's picked up that image beautifully. I use my roller 
to also remove the any excess image that I don't want to transfer down. So if you've picked up any, any image that you don't want to apply onto the nail, I use my lint roller just to remove that because then you haven't got to clean it off of the nail. And again, for an intricate design, this one stamped absolutely beautifully. I love the whole vibe about this plate. They're images that are very me but I especially loved how nicely the detailed and intricate designs did pick up. So we're gonna add a few of the little greenery slash leaves around the edges. And another thing that I wanted to mention is I've used a variety of plates from cheap ones from Born Pretty to expensive ones from Clear Jelly Stamper. So both of those brands are quite known in the stamping industry. Same as things like Moyu, I've used them as well. And I know that when you are purchasing from a new company, sometimes there isn't that trust there because you've not tried them before and things like that. So that was why I wanted to as well take a moment to show you guys how well these stamping plates stamp because they are a new stamping brand to the industry. So of course, they've not been around as long as some of the leading stamping brands, but her plates or Lucy's plates, they stamp just as well as any other stamping plate I've tried. They actually stamp better than some of my Born Pretty ones. I don't have too many clear jelly stamper plates to compare them to, but I have found that these ones stamp amazingly. So I definitely will be purchasing a few more once they go on sale. So I've just been going through, trying out the different designs and stamping them down. This was the only one that didn't stamp 100% perfect for me. And I did try it again off camera just to see if maybe it was me or if it was the plate. And it was me. I did notice that I didn't apply enough stamping polish. So when I watched the video back, you'll see that I didn't fully fill in that area on the cloud so when i scraped it off you could see in the image that there wasn't enough polish there and that's why it then didn't pick up and transfer perfectly when i tried it again off camera it stamped absolutely perfectly also the little star there i did stamp that off camera as my phone had rung and i didn't realize so my camera had stopped recording so you missed out just applying that one little star but we're going to just fly through and do a last bit of stamping on this nail i can't get my words out today it's been a bit of a struggle to be honest the sun is shining and i feel like it has just sent my brain to mush so we're gonna just i'm gonna add one more image onto this one because it is looking a little bit full and i just wanted to mention you'll see whenever i pick up my image with my stamper i like to rock it and roll it across the stamping plate so i sort of press down and I either roll it towards me or roll it away from me just depending on the direction i go in and i always find this little roll slash flick of the wrist with the clear jelly stamper picks up my images perfectly you don't need to apply a hard pressure of course you don't want it to be too light because you do need to pick up that image but i do just find a really light flick of the wrist with your roller picks rolling it sorry with your stamper picks up that image perfectly so we are going to do a tiny bit more stamping at the end of this video but for now we're going to do some foils so i'm coming in with the beautiful dream catcher and i'm just going to apply a one coat of this to all of the nail so i'm just keeping it nice and thin i'm only going to be using this color as a base for my foil we're not going to really be seeing any of the color or very much of the color but whenever i'm using a full coverage foil i like to put a matte matching or complementing color underneath that full coverage foil just so if any areas don't transfer on the foil perfectly the color is going to disguise that and then of course to apply my foils i will be using the kiki london foil gel and i do have one of their marble packs of foils i can't remember what this one's called off the top of my head but i will leave it linked in the description box below as you can see it has a huge selection of beautiful marble foils but i'm going to be using that pastel galaxy vibe one because i felt as though that worked best with the plate that i was using so i've applied a thin coat of my foil and i've cured foil gel and i've cured that for 30 seconds and then i've cut out a piece of that foil and i'm just pressing it directly down on the nail i'm trying to use my fingers to get good 
contact between the foil and the foil gel because it's a little bit hard to rub and press down on these display tips it's a lot easier to apply foils on yourself or a client in my opinion compared to these display tips but i'm just doing my best to press it down and hold the tip on the stand and then also use the silicone tool to rub out any creases then once I feel as though it's mostly transferred, I begin peeling it back, but I do peel back slowly. So then if there is any areas of the foil that's not transferred, I can press it back down. So as you can see, it did transfer pretty well. There was a few little areas where it creased up and that's where why it was handy to have a complementing color underneath because then you can't notice those gaps as much. So I did do that on two nails using the exact same foil and method. And then again, I'm gonna seal my foils in with the matte top coat. So for the same reasons as I did my ombre, we're gonna be stamping over the top of this nail. So I like to make sure I've got a top coat to work on top of and then it also seals in the foil if i didn't apply this layer and wanted to remove the stamping for any reason when i go to remove the stamping it would remove the foil so by having that layer of top coat there it stops that and how gorgeous again do these nails look matte i am definitely a team matte when it comes to nails but i did in the end do all of these nails glossy <laughs> So really quickly, we're gonna do two little stars on the nails. I wanted to use these little stars that were mainly the outline so that you'd still be able to see a lot of that pretty marble foil. And I really loved how the gold looked against the pastel galaxy kind of colors that are there on this nail. I think it looked really, really pretty. So I'm just gonna show you guys this on one nail because we've done a lot of stamping throughout the video, but I do do exactly the same on both nails. I just swapped the stars around. And then, of course, I do still have a one stamping plate from Miss Lucy to try out. So I will have a video coming up using that over the next few days. And as I said, these stamping plates, the whole collection launch on Friday. If you go ahead and give her a follow on Instagram, she has been posting a lot of content showing you guys the stamping plates that she's going to have on offer. So do check that out to see the full collection. Now that I've finished all of my artwork, I'm going to just come in and top coat. So I'm using the Kiki London No Wipe top coat for this step. And I'm just gonna simply float a thin layer over the entire nail. And then once I've got that applied, I'm gonna pop these in to cure for 60 seconds. The Kiki London top coats do only require a 30 second cure, but out of habit, a lot of the time, I do seem to cure my top coats for 60 seconds. But if you're using the Kiki London Deluxe LED lamp, then you do only actually need to cure them for 30 seconds, unless you're using the rubber top coat. Another thing that I wanted to mention about Kiki London is I do have a discount code for them so i will leave that linked in the description box below in case you guys want to purchase anything you can save yourself 10 percent so i really hope you all enjoyed this video and i really hope that you all love the look of the new miss lucy stamping plates as much as i do if you did enjoy today's video please do give it a thumbs up or leave me a comment below and if you aren't already subscribed i would absolutely love it if you hit that subscription button i hope you're all keeping safe and well and i hope wherever you are you've got the lovely spring sunshine that i currently have here because it is absolutely beautiful so I hope you all have a lovely day. Thank you all so much for watching. Lots of love. Take care. Bye-bye.